Look, we don't have to get into a thing. Look around you, Soren. We are in a thing. This is us in a thing. Do you think she heard me say no raisins? I mean, she didn't write it down. What are we talking about? Six cents. I'm allergic to raisins. Oh. Specifically, how the curse that the kid has in the film, The Sixth Sense, isn't a curse. It would actually be a really great superpower. And then hopefully that would open up the conversation for each of you to add your own examples in that framework. And then we'd ultimately land on a winner, me, Daniel. So like just raisins or anything grape based? Very specific. I mean, is that not what we're gonna be doing? I have to keep talking like that. Ooh, I've got one. Can I go first? Mine is it. Then save it for the end. The sixth sense. No, no. It. It is not a curse. It is a monster that sometimes takes the form of a clown and it of origins unknown from before our universe even existed in a dimension called the Deadlights. Maybe it's a dude that exists before the universe in a dimension called the Deadlights, but then it gets cursed to be a monster that occasionally takes the form of a clown. Then yes. No! It! It! Help us out. From it follows it! The STD monster that takes the form of a person slowly walking towards you and then f***s you to death unless you have sex with someone and then it follows them until they have sex with someone else or it kills them by f***ing them to death and then it follows you again? Yes. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Help us out more. Two words, as many syllables as I know. Sex assassin. Michael, you're not suggesting that you would become a professional assassin just to have sex with your target so they would get killed by a monster that would f them to death just so you can keep doing that over. Yeah, you are suggesting that. That's what you're doing, huh? So the upside of this curse is that you get to kill people for money. Or bang people on death row. I don't know. Look, I'm horny and I want to see the world. You'd eventually get f***ed to death by a monster. And look good doing it. But no. Actually, the monster from It Follows follows very slowly, sensuously slowly. And I could figure out exactly how slowly by taking a stopwatch, walking through a football field, and timing it as it follows me. Horny makes him do math. Then, when I know its exact speed, I can fly to Sweden, see the sights, f some sexy murderer, and set an alarm for whenever the monster is gonna come. You to death. Ooh, okay, I don't love mine. Someone else go. Daniel! Sure. Yeah, if you don't go soon, a monster will show up and pontificate about pop culture you to death. Aw, oh, buddy, are you cursed? Huh? Did you insult a gypsy by stereotyping a Romani people or, like, you know, using the slur gypsy? The sixth sense. So, the kid can see dead people, right? Whoa, spoilers! spoilers! It's okay, I've, I've seen it. Same. Same. So, in the sixth sense, Cole Seer, yes, his last name is Seer, can mm. see dead people. I see dead people. And then we find out that Bruce Willis was dead the whole time and so on. Now, if you could, spoilers, see dead people, you could talk to them, you can communicate, you can help them with their unfinished business. That's doing a service for the deceased and you can uh, make a little extra for yourself on the side because some of those dead people, you gotta figure have stuff to give you. Oh, totally. I bet for every 10th death you avenge or relationship you fix, you know there's gonna be some corpsey schmuck with a shoebox full of cash or a secret horse you can have. What? And I would use that, I mean, I'd sell the horse and I would use that money to pay for these meals to perpetuate our pop culture conversations. They're uh, all I have. I know. Okay, not to squash my dreams of you paying for all of my future food that will probably have raisins in it, but the sixth sense isn't really a curse, is it? It's just like a crappy ability that some breathy kid has. It's a sense. The only thing that cursed him is biology. And you'd have to talk to all those people. You see that, right? All the ghosts? You can barely talk to the waitress who's been here three years. That's <laughs> not true. <sighs> mm. So, people, huh? You'd have to talk to them. Somebody else go. Pirates of the Caribbean is the obvious one, right? It's when a monster follows you around singing It's a Small World After All, yes? The Curse of the Black Pearl is basically a free pass on immortality. In the first Pirates of the... the, uh, the Oh, world after, oh. God damn it, Michael. Caribbean. Thank you. In the first Pirates of the Caribbean, a bunch of Caribbean pirates steal Aztec gold and become cursed, which is to say that they become immortal until they return all the gold pieces. You also can't feel anything or taste anything or experience any of the pleasures associated with life except just existing. You look like a decomposed corpse in the moonlight. Rude. Buddy, you don't look that bad. You just need, 
Is gaunt nicer than decomposed? You look gaunt. Yeah, well, the pirates and pirates appear undead under the moonlight. I mean, they live miserable lives, never ending though they may be. I'm aware of all the problems facing a zombie pirate, but I could just return the gold and I'm back to normal. Keep the trunk right by my front door, take out a handful every time I go on some death-defying adventure, and then I return the gold, and once again, I'm free to enjoy the taste of Katie's sweet raisins. Also sex, I can sex again. But Soren, what's your biggest weakness? Too much of my biggest strength. What? No, blood. Oh yeah, I guess you could die from too much blood. <gasps> like putting too much blood in a balloon. Or putting too much blood in a Ziploc bag. Or putting way too much blood. It's not blood just about returning the gold. You have to bleed every time to end the curse. You would have to cut yourself and bleed all over the gold whenever you want it to revert back to normal. <laughs> uh, every time? Oh, there it is, yep. Well, it belongs on the inside. I know it does, buddy. Bootstrap Bill's son. They use his blood. I could use my son's uh, blood. You know, maybe curses are just bad. It's right there in the name. We can't come up with a single good curse from a movie. Then how the hell am I supposed to get an article out of this conversation? Why am I taking mental notes? Why do we go to this diner that puts f***ing raisins in their f***ing salads if I can't scrap together some article out of this? Wait a minute. I thought we were just having terrible salads with friends. Yeah, have you been using our conversations for articles? God, I feel so used. You just now talked about regularly using your son's blood to end a curse. Yes, I have to prepare him for the real world. He's gonna have to know how to break a curse sometime. And Katie, my only true friends are quality content and its elusive mistress, millions and millions of clicks. Oh, well then in that case, the ring. Mine's you guys. I. I love you guys. Mm. Katie, speak on that. Okay, so the whole curse in the ring is that once you watch tomorrow's video, you have to get someone else to watch within seven days or else you'll die horribly, right? I mean, not f to death horribly, but still bad, yeah. Okay, all Samara wants is for people to know her story. Once everybody in the world sees the video, then the curse is broken. So just change your article into a video, slap a disclaimer on the front of it saying, hey, this is a ring type situation. You have to show this video to someone else or else you're gonna die terribly, et cetera, et cetera. And then once they know that the curse is real, YouTube will take off with that and you'll have seven billion views before you can say no raisins. This is a bad diner, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want to make a fuss, but there are raisins in my burger. Why do we come here at them? It's not close to any of our houses. Why don't we just go to a bar tomorrow night? Actually, I don't remember ever being anywhere but a diner. Hmm. Me neither. Have we ever not been sitting around at a diner making pop culture observations and analyses forever? Yeah, look, we don't have to get into a thing. Oh, look around you, Soren. We are in a thing. This is us in a thing. Look, we don't have to get into a thing. Look around you, Soren. We are in a thing. This is us in a thing. Look around you, Soren. We are in a thing. This is us in a thing. Do you think she heard me say no raisins? I mean, she didn't write it down. What are we talking about? Back, Back to the future. I'm allergic to raisins. Huh. We've changed so much. I haven't. That was like five to seven hairdos ago for me. Is it wrong of me that rather than be in this eternal pop culture diner, I'd like to be f to death? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a topic? Yeah. Are the cycles getting shorter now? Mm, yeah. Next topic. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, some of our eagle-eyed fans uh, like to point out things we made mis mistakes on, and we love this, we love our fans. I call them the, uh, the after hours laughter flowers because they're so bright and they're blooming and one day they'll die. He does do um, that a lot. But they point out things, so to get ahead of the story we're going to issue some retractions of things we got wrong. The first one, we said in this episode that it was Aztec gold and Pirates of the Caribbean. It's not, it's not Aztec gold, it's a completely different kind of gold. Yeah, good spot flowers. Mm -hmm. And now, Soren, what are some of the other mistakes we made in this episode that you uh, can correct? You'll notice that at the beginning of this uh, thing that Dan is doing now, he flubbed uh, a couple of his, his words there <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and got them wrong. Where'd I learn um, that from, flowers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick. <laughs> I do this for you. 